Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to go over my top 10 misconceptions I see come up the most in biology. Now I've been teaching biology for quite some time and these are things that I see year after year that students get confused about or just get plain wrong. Misconceptions are really hard to combat because you have to basically relearn something from scratch and make new connections in your brain. I'm going to go through some misconceptions I see students have all the time. This may not fix your own misconceptions but maybe it'll get you talking about them and hopefully you'll learn something new. Counting down from number 10, this one is about global warming. Yes, global warming warming is a thing, but no, global warming is not caused by ozone depletion. I have a lot of students who think that the holes in the ozone are actually contributing to more sunlight coming into the Earth's atmosphere, and that's what's contributing to global warming, when in fact the holes in the ozone don't really have much to do with the overall warming temperatures of Earth. In fact, it's the buildup of greenhouse gases and this greenhouse effect that causes the warming of the Earth's atmosphere. Yes, the holes in the ozone that are caused by humans are going to contribute to increased UV radiation on Earth, but in fact is not what's actually causing this massive global warming that we see across the earth. Number nine, this is a meme I see all the time coming around around exam time, but students say, oh, you don't want to study? Why don't you sleep with your textbook under your pillow and absorb it through osmosis? Now we all know that that is false, but the idea that osmosis is molecules or something sinking into you really isn't correct. Osmosis is the movement of water molecules from a high concentration to a low concentration, generally across a membrane. And it's that specific movement. Diffusion and active transport and facilitated diffusion are other types of molecular movement, which we do talk about in biology. But if you're talking about osmosis, you should be talking about the movement of water, and that's it. All right, next up, this is another one that comes up in a meme all the time, and that's the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Well, yes, technically, but it's a metaphor that drives me crazy. One, because it's the one thing students remember about the cells, but two, it does not accurately depict what actually happens in the mitochondria. The mitochondria is the site of a series of very specific biological reactions and the process is called cellular respiration and that respiration is what gets us ATP which is the molecule of energy in the cell. Now a lot of students get these steps mixed up along the way and I get it cellular respiration is a very complex process and you don't even get to see the notes and bolts of it until you get to about AP biology but just know that in the mitochondria we have lots of different biochemical reactions happening that are going to generate ATP molecules with the help of oxygen. Not really a misconception but you should should get to know your mitochondria a little better. Number seven has to also do with cellular respiration, and that's the idea that plants only do photosynthesis. In biology, we know that plants do do photosynthesis, and photosynthesis is using the sun's energy to create organic compounds or sugars. A lot of students think that plants get their energy directly from the sun, when in fact plants also have to do cellular respiration. Plants also have mitochondria, and they also have to go through that cellular respiration process in order to get their energy. They just can't take it from the sun and boom, have energy. Yes, they have their powerhouse of the cell too, but they have to go through the cellular respiration process with the glucose that they have created in photosynthesis to then get the ATP energy that they need to survive. The number six misconception is that plants only produce asexually when no, we know that is false. There's a lot of sexual reproduction and weird plant life cycles that occur in the plant kingdom. And if you study plants, you'll learn that there's lots of fascinating and interesting types of sexual reproduction that can occur within the plant kingdom. My number five misconception is that you have some control or people who are more dominant can control what type of biological sex their offspring will be. And that is totally false. For Homo sapiens sapiens, which are us, you have exactly a 50-50 shot. And in fact, it's the sperm that's going to determine this. Every single time, a female will donate an X in the egg, and the male will donate either an X or a Y in the sperm. My number four misconception is that organic in biology means something that you would buy at Whole Foods, when in fact, organic in biology refers to something that contains carbon. These carbon-containing molecules are the basics of all of the cells that we have in our bodies, and they're really important as far as how things are structured, how our cells and tissues and organs function in all living organisms. So I want you to think next time you hear organic, not something that's created without the use of pesticides or something that you would get at the farmer's market, but instead I want you thinking about carbon. My number three misconception is that individuals can evolve or that adaptation happens within a lifetime. When in fact, when we talk about the words evolution and adaptation in biology, they are very specific circumstances. Individuals do not evolve, populations evolve. And so one person cannot themselves evolve within a lifetime. There's a lot of video games and science fiction that shows individual organisms evolving within their own lifetime when we know that that is just not true. When evolution itself is the change 
in specific traits within a population over time. So as you get into the study of evolution, I want you to sink into your brain that individuals do not evolve. My number two misconception in biology is something that you can Google right now, and that is that genetically modified organisms are generally a scientist that sticks a syringe into a tomato or an orange or a fish, when in fact we know that this is false. In order to genetically modify an organism, in most cases, you're going to have to take that organism at the single cellular level and transform it before it becomes a multicellular organism. You can't genetically modify a person that is already grown up. Now we may get to the point with CRISPR-Cas9 technologies where genetic modification and gene therapies are much easier, cheaper, and able to be done on larger organisms, but for the most part, scientists and labs are performing genetic modification on organisms before they actually grow. So single cellular organisms are where that genetic modification takes place, and any image you ever see with a tomato in a syringe is not a genetic modification, that's just a stupid picture. My last misconception, and this is one of the biggest ones that will maybe blow your mind, a lot of students think that big trees, big plants, get all of their mass, their physical matter from the soil that they soak up with all of the nutrients and the water, and that is false. The mass of the plant or a giant tree or whatever you're looking at as far as something that does photosynthesis comes from the air. What? Yes, trees actually take in carbon through the process of photosynthesis and those carbon molecules are converted to organic molecules. Those molecules are then what contribute to the actual structure, the large mass of the plant. This is a really hard one to get over because there's at some point when you're young, you learn that plants suck up things through their roots and then those help the plant to grow. When in fact, the large bulk of the mass of the plant comes from the carbon in the air. It is all part of the carbon cycle. So carbon dioxide is how trees get so big, not stuff in the soil. I hope you enjoyed these misconceptions in biology. Let me know if you thought any of these before you watch this video and if any of these confused you. <laughs> Share this if you thought it was interesting. Give it a like if you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching.